That's James Prescott Joule, a famous English physicist and mathematician who first discovered thermal energy. Boom! <laughs> Did you like my shocking entrance? James and his brother used to experiment with electricity by giving each other electric shocks. If you ask me, I think his brain is still a little fried. <laughs> Good day, James. My friends here would like to know more about how to prevent overheating, so we can help keep a robot cool. Ah, yes, heat. It's a form of energy, just like light. Light makes a place bright, while heat makes a place warm. To help cool something down, you first have to understand about heat. Heat is energy that moves between two objects when one is hotter than the other. Most materials expand when heated and contract when cooled. When this metal ball is heated, it gains heat and expands. As a result, the ball can't pass through the ring. What happens when the metal ball continues to be heated? Depending on the object, too much heat can cause cracks or meltdowns. Hey, I'm James too. James Dewar. That's James Dewar, the inventor of the vacuum flask. Ah, so he invented something. But did he have a unit of energy named after him? Peh, show off. Anyway, I invented the vacuum flask, you know, which helps slow down heat transfer. Oh, how does it work? Well, I wanted to create a container that could store a cold substance for a longer period of time. I experimented with different materials. Finally, I realized that heat cannot travel from the outer wall to the inner wall if there is no air. There will be no convection. So, I remove the air to create a vacuum. Just like that, the cold substance in the flask remains cold. So, if the substance in the flask is warm, it remains warm for a longer time too? Precisely! Do some materials allow heat to flow through more easily than others? Absolutely! Materials that allow heat to flow through easily are called good conductors of heat. For example, a metal frying pan is a good conductor of heat, which is great for cooking food, while the plastic handle is a poor conductor of heat and helps to protect our hands from the heat while cooking. Sorry, Mr. Dua, one second. Yes, Tyler? Is Ago okay? He's more than okay. I fixed them. You did? But I don't feel any better. Oh no, Tyler, what did you do? I just put Argo in the fridge. He'll stay cool for good now. Phew, this has been a really stressful day. No, no, don't, don't do, that. do that. Condensation will happen. Condensation? When water is heated, it gains heat and changes from a liquid to a gas. This is called evaporation. But when you put something in the fridge, it gets cold. When warm air from the outside gets in contact with the icy surface, the reverse happens as the gas loses heat and changes to liquid. This is called condensation. This liquid is not good for your robotic parts. And you really shouldn't expose electronics to fluctuating temperatures anyway, as it will damage the battery and core parts of its internal system. Tyler, take Argo out of the fridge now! Okay, okay, I'll take him out now! But it's still so hot out here, and I'm sweating so much! Sorry, just hang in there and continue blowing on Argo until we get back. No putting him in the fridge. Sweat. I wonder why we sweat. Sweating is our body's way of cooling down. Sweat evaporates from the skin, and the vapor takes away some of the heat with it. Is there any way to stop the heat wave in the real world? I'm afraid not. With global warming looming, the heat wave is something you will continue to face in the years to come. Oh no, we're killing the planet! Well, there are many little things you can do to help the environment. Raising the AC temperature to 25 degrees helps to save energy and is better for the environment. Or just don't use the AC if you can. Eat a watermelon. I promise. Every small step counts towards making the world a cooler place to live in. I think we should go. I have an idea on how to keep you cool.
we may have found a way to really destroy the virus once and for all, but we need your help. What do you know about rainbows? Rainbows are the result of light. Ah, light. Such a beautiful form of energy. Without light, we won't be able to see anything around us. We can see the book because the lamp is shining on it. The lamp is a source of light. We can only see it because the light is reflected off the book and into our eyes. In fact, the sun is our biggest source of light during the day. It helps us to see our surroundings clearly. Are rainbows natural sources of light too? Rainbows are a little bit more complicated than that. They're the result of reflection and refraction of light. Okay, I know reflection happens when light hits a surface and bounces off, but what is refraction? Refraction happens when light travels from one material to another of a different density, such as from water to air. As a result, the light bends. Knock, knock! Oh, 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 you have to answer who's there, quickly! Um, who's there? Harry! Harry who? Hurry up! Old light is disappearing from our life! <laughs> uh, uh, Newton's humour is a little dark for some people. If you want something lighter, you shouldn't come to the guy who discovered gravity. Not many people remember his first experiment that showed how white light is a variety of colours. Like a rainbow? Exactly! How did you do it? I'll tell you, but first, tell me your names and why you want to know. I'm Marie, and this is my friend Argo. We're trying to create a rainbow to distract the virus long enough to destroy it. Apparently, the one thing the virus likes more than light itself is a rainbow. I see. Well, that virus is going down. I know just how to create a rainbow, and I did it many years ago. It was a cold winter day. I darkened the room and made a hole in the window shutter to allow just one beam of sunlight to enter. No more, no less. Just one. Then what happened? And then I took a glass prism and placed it in the sunbeam. Cool! The result was a multicolored band of light like one of a rainbow. With that experiment, I proved that white light was made up of different colors of the spectrum. But for a rainbow to be created, does that mean there are prisms in the sky? A raindrop acts like a prism. So when white light hits the raindrops in the sky, it separates into different colors due to refraction, forming a rainbow. This is perfect. So all we need is a prism to create a rainbow. Benjamin Franklin! I really should stop playing with lightning. Whew. I'm afraid these spectacles are ruined. Never play around with electricity, children. It can hurt you real bad. It's a wonder I'm still alive. But on the bright side, my kite experiment did prove that lightning is electricity. Electricity? Yeah, you want to learn about it? That's why we came here. Well then, let's start at the very beginning. The entire universe is made of tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are made of even smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons and electrons fly around the nucleus in circles at almost the speed of light. Wow. Yeah, sometimes when atoms get close to each other, electrons will jump from one atom to another atom. And that is electricity. That's easy. But electricity only becomes useful if we create a current out of it. Now, to create an electrical current, we need a power source, like a battery, a conductor, like a copper or aluminum wire, and a switch. 
When the switch turns on, the magnetic charges in the battery pull electrons through the wire, making a current. When the switch turns off, the current stops. Is that how light bulbs turn off and on? It is. Let's put a light bulb on our circuit. Now when we turn the current back on, the light bulb shines. When we turn the current off, the light bulb stops shining. If the wire is copper or aluminium, why are all the wires and power cables in my house rubber? Ah, the copper or aluminum wires are inside the rubber. Oh, I see. Rubber is a protective insulator that makes sure the electrical current in the wire doesn't escape and start a fire or shock someone. Hmm. If a wire isn't protected by rubber, and you accidentally touch it while a current is flowing? Yeah! Oh no! He's higher than a kite! Ah, that's Ben for you. Hello. I'm sure Ben already told you all about me. No? Michael Faraday? The guy who invented the electric motor? Um... The famous experiment with the mercury water and the magnets. Oh, all right. Let's put it this way. The power plants and batteries that generate the electricity that powers your lives wouldn't exist if it weren't for me. Oh. You're flickering. I am? Hako, you just flickered too. When was the last time you charged your batteries? Um, mm, uh, maybe ten days ago? That sounds like a long time. Batteries need to be recharged regularly, or they will lose all their power. Ago, what will happen to us if your batteries go out and we're stuck in here? We well, better go home. To watch more, subscribe to our YouTube channel.